This is Love Notes, Daily Devotions from Holy Trinity Lutheran Church. Grace and peace to you. Our passage today is John, the 19th chapter, verses 38 through 42, the burial of Jesus. After these things, a f formula for saying that after he'd been crucified and after everything had taken place, we're told that Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, though a secret one because of his fear of the Jews, asked Pilate to let him take away the body of Jesus. Pilate gave him permission, and so he came and removed his body. We're not 100% sure who Joseph of Arimathea is, other than what's written here. He's a secret disciple of Jesus, who's afraid of the Jews. He has enough power or has enough leverage in order to get Pilate to do him what he asks. So perhaps he's a recognized leader of the council or he's a, a prominent figure in Jerusalem and the Jewish leadership. In any case, Pilate grants the request and Joseph comes out of the darkness, out of his fear, and he asks to bury the Lord. We're told also in verse 39 that Nicodemus, who we know well, who had first come to Jesus by night back in chapter 3, also came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes weighing about 100 pounds. Now this is a lot to bring to the burial of a, a common carpenter or fisherman or prophet from Galilee. This is enough to bury a king and to do it right. And so Nicodemus brings a burial fit for a king. And once again, we're reminded that this is, in fact, who Jesus is, the king of the nations, the Lord of the world, the word made flesh. Jesus is God among us. And so Joseph and Nicodemus, who had been in the dark quite a bit of the time, now edge out of the light out of the darkness and into the light at the death of Jesus. There is something compelling about the sacrifice of Jesus that calls us to courage, bravery, faith. It calls us to believe, and maybe then it calls us to risk. So they took Jesus, the body of Jesus and they wrapped it with the spices and linen cloths, according to the burial custom of the Jews. Now there was a garden in the place where he was crucified. I always find that kind of strange, that here in this place of death, there's a garden nearby. And in that garden, there was a new tomb which no one had ever been laid in. Uh, tradition tells us it might have been Joseph of Arimathea's own tomb that he'd had made. Tombs were a little bit different in ancient times. They were not permanent resting places. You laid the body, once it had been wrapped in the spices and linen cloths, in the tomb, and then you left it there for a couple of years or so. The flesh was then consumed, the body degraded, and finally what was left were the bones. The tomb would then be opened and the bones would be collected and placed in an ossuary box, which took up a whole lot less space. And then the tomb would be used by someone else. This tomb had never been used. So they laid Jesus there. Fully prepared, there is no need to anoint him any further. Fully buried, the final word has been spoken. Just as we think it is when we lay someone we love to rest in the ground, this page has been turned on history, so we think. And so it says, because it was the Jewish day of preparation and the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there and then they went home. These secret and unlikely disciples show up and bury the Lord. You see, faith happens sometimes in very, very small steps. It is a process that begins. Nicodemus has been on a 
journey throughout the whole three years of Jesus' ministry, it seems. Joseph of Arimathea has come out of the dark into the light. And when they do come, they come with abundance, a new tomb and a king's burial. The cross has revealed love and it has evoked faith. And that's what it does. The cross reveals love and evokes faith. They are his unlikely disciples. And I guess so are we. Amen.